Hello and welcome to American CME's presentation on the RescuePod ITD-10. I'm Jeff Lassers, CPR instructor. Performing high quality CPR is essential if our patients are to have any meaningful chance at surviving cardiac arrest. Thankfully, there are many tools that can help us to get it right, as well as technology that provides IPR therapy to help make high quality conventional CPR even better. The Rescue Pod ITD is used to regulate airway pressures during CPR in order to enhance blood flow and provide perfusion on demand. When used in combination with high quality CPR, use of the Rescue Pod ITD 10 has been shown to improve survival by 25% or more compared to conventional manual CPR. The goal of this course is to provide you with the essential information about the RescuePod ITD, but it is intended to accompany a hands-on skill session that will allow you to practice using it with high-quality CPR. And while this presentation is consistent with the manufacturer's recommendation, it is important to understand the product's instructions for use as well as follow the policies and procedures adopted by your hospital. By the end of this video presentation, you will Understand the relationship between intrathoracic pressure and blood flow. Understand how IPR therapy improves blood flow. Understand the physiology of CPR. Understand how an ITD works and how it provides IPR therapy during cardiac arrest. And finally, understand how to perform high quality CPR in conjunction with the RescuePod ITD-10. It's essential to understand the vital interactions between the respiratory and circulatory systems because the body regulates pressures inside the chest in order to influence blood flow and perfusion. As blood travels through the circulatory system, perfusion takes place. Perfusion means that blood is flowing to the tissues to deliver oxygen and nutrients to the cells. This circulation also picks up waste products such as lactic acid and carbon dioxide for elimination from the body. All organs of the body need adequate perfusion in order to function properly. The body continually regulates circulation by using positive and negative pressures inside the thoracic cavity. Let's look at how intrathoracic pressure regulation helps maintain equilibrium. When a healthy person inhales, the diaphragm moves down and the chest wall moves out. This chest expansion creates a vacuum that draws air into the lungs and pulls blood back to the heart. This vacuum also slightly lowers intracranial pressure, or ICP. Reducing ICP lowers the resistance to forward blood flow and improves perfusion to the brain. As a person exhales, the diaphragm moves up and the chest wall moves in. This creates a positive pressure that forces air out. However, this positive intrathoracic pressure also inhibits blood flow back to the heart and slightly raises ICP. When we exert ourselves, metabolic needs change, and the body regulates intrathoracic pressure to meet the increased demands. To compensate, we breathe harder, faster, and deeper, enhancing the vacuum in the chest. This pulls more air into the lungs, more blood back to the heart, and lowers ICP. The net result is improved vital organ blood flow. This compensation also occurs during shock. As tissue perfusion drops, the body attempts to maintain blood flow by increasing the respiratory and heart rates and by constricting peripheral blood vessels. But if the cause of the shock is not reversed, the body eventually loses its ability to compensate, the blood pressure falls, and the perfusion is compromised. Intrathoracic pressure regulation or IPR therapy is used to enhance negative intrathoracic pressure to help the body help itself in states of shock. Studies show that IPR therapy does this by providing a slight amount of therapeutic resistance to the influx of air. This enhanced vacuum pulls more blood back to the chest and heart, increasing preload and cardiac output. It also lowers ICP, making it easier to circulate blood to the brain. Think of IPR therapy as the opposite of CPAP, which delivers positive pressures to patients with congestive heart failure in order to drive fluid out of the lungs and lower blood pressure. In summary, IPR therapy provides an innovative way for the body to leverage its own natural physiology in order to provide perfusion on demand in states of shock and cardiac arrest. Did you know that no matter how good you are at CPR, you can only generate about 25 to 40 percent of normal blood flow to vital organs? Think about that for a second. No matter how well you perform CPR, you are only about a third as efficient as a normal beating heart. 
Limited blood flow during CPR occurs for two primary reasons. First, as the chest wall recoils, air is drawn in through the open airway. This wipes out the vacuum or negative pressure that helps to return blood back to the heart. Second, some healthcare providers do not attempt high quality CPR, and these errors compromise blood flow. Let's begin by talking about the first reason. During CPR, blood is circulated forward by two mechanisms. With the cardiac pump mechanism, the heart is compressed between the sternum and the spine, and this helps force blood out. More importantly, the chest also becomes a thoracic pump. Chest compression creates a positive pressure that forces blood out of the heart and air out of the lungs. Compression also causes a slight increase in ICP, which reduces cerebral perfusion. Then, during the decompression phase, the chest wall passively recoils, creating a slight negative intrathoracic pressure. This vacuum draws some blood back into the heart, pulls some air into the lungs, and fills the coronary arteries. ICP is also slightly lowered during decompression, which helps with cerebral perfusion. Chest compressions and decompressions create a sequence of alternating positive and negative intrathoracic pressures that help to circulate blood. The more blood that can be returned to the heart, called preload, the more blood that can be circulated forward on the next compression. Optimizing preload is critical for maximizing the effectiveness of CPR. Blood flow during CPR can be limited, however, because just as the chest wall begins to recoil, air rushes in through the open airway and wipes out the vacuum that is needed to fill the heart. Once the negative pressure is gone, the heart stops filling. This diminished preload results in decreased cardiac output on the next compression. Now let's talk about the second issue, CPR quality. Studies show that caregivers often make errors during the performance of CPR that further compromise its effectiveness. For example, ventilating too often or with too much tidal volume causes excessive positive intrathoracic pressure that limits blood flow back to the heart and increases ICP. Compressing too slowly fails to generate enough pressure within the circulatory system. Compressing too fast limits preload because the heart does not have enough time to fill with blood. Finally, if the chest wall does not recoil completely, it results in decreased blood flow back to the heart. All of these factors can compromise cardiac output. And remember, less cardiac output means less perfusion. Given that we only get about a third of normal blood flow with the best manual CPR, it's important to get it right. Begin compressions as soon as possible. Minimize interruptions and try to achieve a compression fraction of greater than 80%. Provide proper chest compressions at a rate of 100 to 120 per minute at a depth of 2 to 2.4 inches for adult patients and allow complete chest wall recoil. Provide ventilations at a rate of less than 12 per minute delivering each over the duration of one second and with only enough tidal volume to produce visible chest rise. The Rescue Pod ITD-10 is an impedance threshold device, or ITD, that is used to provide IPR therapy during cardiac arrest. In this section, we'll talk about how the Rescue Pod ITD-10 works and then discuss how to use it on a face mask and an advanced airway. Recall that during CPR, positive pressure helps to circulate blood forward, while negative pressure, or a vacuum, helps to refill the heart. An impedance threshold device, or ITD, fits into the airway circuit on a face mask or advanced airway. During chest compression, the ITD's valve opens and air is forced out of the lungs and through the ITD without resistance. But as the chest wall recoils, the ITD's valve closes and selectively prevents air from being drawn back in. Preventing the influx of air back into the lungs helps enhance the negative pressure, which pulls more blood back to the chest and heart. This increased preload results in increased cardiac output on the next compression. This enhanced vacuum also lowers ICP, which increases blood flow to the brain. It's important to note that the ITD does not restrict the rescuer's ability to ventilate. Applying the rescue pot as soon as possible after chest compressions have begun helps to optimize blood flow during the early and most critical phases of CPR. Let's take a look at how to do that. First, let's discuss how to use the rescue pod ITD on a face mask. Begin by attaching the rescue pod to the face mask. Next, apply an end tidal CO2 detector if available. Then, attach a ventilation source 
such as a bag valve mask or BVM, to the top of the circuit. Once the circuit is prepared, spread the cushion and position the mask over the patient's nose and mouth. Use a two-handed technique to ensure a good seal against the patient's face. A good face mask seal is critical for providing IPR therapy during BLS airway management. Using a head strap may help to maintain an airtight seal. Next, open the patient's airway, being careful to lift the jaw to the face mask. Then begin providing ventilations at the recommended compression to ventilation ratio. Ideally, the person at the airway maintains the face mask seal using two hands, while another rescuer provides ventilations. Ventilate over one second and with only enough tidal volume to achieve visible chest rise. Excessive ventilation has been shown to decrease the ITD's ability to enhance negative pressure and blood flow. And when a pulse returns, remove the rescue pod immediately and continue care per your local protocols. If the patient re-arrests, start CPR and place the rescue pod back on the patient's airway. Now let's discuss how to use the rescue pod ITD on an advanced airway, such as an ET tube or supraglottic airway device. Once an advanced airway has been placed, confirm tube placement and secure it using a commercial tube restraint. Then attach the rescue pod to the airway device. Next, apply an end tidal CO2 detector if available. After that, attach the BVM. Now, turn on the timing assist lights and provide continuous CPR at a rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute. Each time the lights flash, provide one ventilation. Remember, ventilate over one second and with only enough tidal volume to achieve visible chest rise. If the rescue pod fills with secretions, remove it from the circuit and use the ventilation source to clear it. And when a pulse returns, remove the rescue pod immediately and continue care per your local protocols. The rescue pod ITD is for single patient use only and should be disposed of properly after one has been used. In summary, the rescue pod provides IPR therapy by preventing the influx of air back into the lungs, which enhances the negative pressure in the chest during CPR. This vacuum pulls more blood back to the chest and heart, resulting in increased preload and cardiac output on the next compression. This enhanced vacuum also lowers ICP, making it easier to get blood flow to the brain. You now have all the information you need to begin practicing use of the rescue pod in conjunction with high quality CPR. It's important to practice frequently so that you're ready to be effective when it counts. And as much as we don't like to admit it, healthcare providers often don't perform CPR very well, even with training. So consider CPR quality feedback tools that will help you to get it right. Finally, there are two more essential activities that should be a part of your efforts to improve survival from cardiac arrest. The first includes debriefing after every CPR call to review what went right and identify what can be improved upon. Second, collect data. It's pretty hard to get better if you don't know where you're starting from. Zoll Technologies are focused on advancing resuscitation today by providing IPR therapy and real CPR help technology. For more information on any of the info that you've seen in this program, please visit Zoll.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.